welcome to another up close video. Today's one is for Tonic Showcase number 28, which is called Baked with Love. I'm really sorry that this one is late, but I didn't get the die set until after it had launched, um, and then I took a little bit of time off, um, and I kind of cheated with this one as well. I still haven't actually made an oven, um, and past me will tell you later on how I cheated. Um, but this one might also come out after Showcase 29, so I'm sorry that they're all in the wrong order, but hopefully for those of you who've got hold of the oven die set, you should have yours by now, so this might be quite nice timing for you to have this video to watch as well. Um, or I think it is still available if you haven't got hold of it yet, I think it's still available on the website, so there will be affiliate links in the description box below the video and on my blog post as well. Um, but let's have a run through of the dies that are included and the stamps that are included as well. I've got mine in the proper packaging, um, so you get your gorgeous inspiration sheet on here too. You've got a bit of inspiration on the back as well, they kind of open them up to show you different uh, bits and pieces that you could store inside them or um, give as a gift inside them. Oh, later on in the video I say that you could give a little cake and I didn't even notice that there was a little cake on the back there. Um, so I think it would be a lovely idea for gifting a small little cake as well. Um, and a good thing about the back is it also depicts all of the dies that are in the set as well. So if you want to see what a die looks like cut out, you've got that quick reference on the back of it. Or you can also instantly know if you've misplaced a die because um, you can see a picture of it on the back there. And then inside this little leaflet that comes with the die set, you get your instructions and you can see there's pretty much no instructions because this is such a simple box to put together. It's literally three pieces cut out and then you just glue it all together with the glue tabs and it just makes a cube kind of box. Um, and you can have this filigree piece on the back, you can cut that flat if you want to, you can leave it raised up but cut it flat or you can do what um, Past Me will show you on some of the samples, you can raise it up really high and have that kind of backsplash with with your utensils sort of hanging up there as well. So there's loads of different ways of kind of altering this die set and I, I mention a few more later on too. So lots of different ways of sort of playing with that and adapting it a little bit. And when you get your die set, it'll come in the plastic wallet, um, which has got the holes in it so it fits in the tonic large storage binders. And you also get your magnetic sheet in there as well. Your dies actually come on um, a piece of acetate with the little foam tape strips holding it on and the die, the magnetic sheet is actually separate, which I never realised that before because I, I rarely get them in their actual packaging. Um, so you kind of have to sort of disassemble everything and then put all your dies on your magnetic sheet. But you can just put the acetate on top of the magnet sheet as well um, and everything will still, you know, sort of stay on even though it's stuck to the, the foam. It'll sort of cling on to the magnetic sheet as well. So depending how often you use your dies or if the stickies run out on the little foam tape strips, you've got your magnetic sheet there for when you want it. And um, all of their magnetic sheets are double-sided. So if you have another die set that you want to store in with this, maybe you got the... Um, milk and cookies stamp club and you want to keep the dies in with that because you think some of these would sort of mix and match with it maybe you've got um, little like cake stamps or other little bits of food and stuff that you might want to keep in with this because you think you're most likely to kind of use it when making this kind of die set you can definitely do that as well or maybe you've got some sentiments that would work nicely with this set and you want to keep them in there too so um, I love that that you have that option of storing something else on the back of it inside the folder if you want to as well so the actual die set fits on your A4 sheet so you You'll either need an A4 machine to cut it out because of the length, or if you, I think some of the smaller machines, uh, I think maybe a, a big shot, but I've never tried a big shot, I think you can get um, longer plates for them, even though they're the narrow width, you can get the long plates. So if you have one of those machines, this should work in that as well, because the width, um, you're not limited by the width of the die, it's the length of the die um, that you kind of need that longer plate for. So you could get away with having a, a narrower mouth machine and still cut this out. But these are all of the dies that you're getting in the set. And the main dies to make your oven are this long piece here which has got a uh, part of the closure for the oven. So this will be the top of your little cooker or oven and these will be the two sides and your back panel will stick on using these glue tabs that are here. 
The back panel is this piece, which you can use as it is, or you can alter it. You can cut this across straight. You can cut it down a little bit more so it literally just makes a cube and you don't have anything sticking up on the back, depending on uh, what sort of look you're going for. You might even want to, um, you know, keep this bit up here, cut it straight so it looks a little bit maybe more masculine and put your controls for the oven on this back piece as well, because I'm pretty sure some ovens um, do have that with the, the raised up back piece with the sort of knobs on there so you could do that too but that is the back piece that sticks onto those glue tabs and then you have this piece as well which actually creates the bottom of the box so these three glue tabs will hold it to the bottom and then you also have this piece which is the door of your oven and this small little um, semicircle here actually slots inside of this larger semicircle there's a slit and they actually slot into each other so when this goes together those two will sort of come together and this will be the front of your oven and that will be the top of your oven so it's a really simple box to put together and you have got those um, simple instructions inside your little leaflet as well then you've got your decoration panels and because this has two of the same sides to it and they've given it to you uh, all in one die they've given you two options for uh, the outside cutting edge for these uh, decorative pieces so you've got the plain uh, straight edged cutting die which gives you that curve on the bottom as well to go with the curve of the little foot portion of the oven and then this one it is exactly the same size but it's got that piercing detail around it as well so you can do straight edged or pierced detail edges for those side panels then you also have two decorative details to go inside of that I need a magnet um, You've got this one which cuts a complete lattice sort of design in the side. Um, I think this would look really nice uh, tone on tone as well and it would kind of give maybe um, a fancy look of like embossed stainless steel for uh, the side of an oven. It could be, give a cool look like that um, or you can really sort of um, emphasise this pattern and use a different colour behind it to make it stand out. And then I love this one. I think this is going to be really nice just for your regular card making, debossing this or even hot foiling it into other um, shapes that you might have of die cuts as well and um, this is a gorgeous little like four pointed flower kind of design that repeats all across it really pretty this one i think this is going to be a really lovely one for using in your card making as well but this looks fantastic debossed into satin mirror card because it really shows up that beautiful debossing detail i think it would look lovely in pearlescent card as well or you could do it into um the smooth side of your textured craft perfect and then put some mousse over the top to sort of bring out um, the leftover raised up pieces as well or I'm sure you could actually try um, swiping an ink pad over this and then running it through the machine and getting that letterpress kind of look with it as well so you've got that decorative panel then um, other decorative panel wises you have got this piece to decorate that top fancy bit of the oven so you've got that shape to decorate that and then you have uh, this has just got a straight cutting edge on it but you have the same two designs so you can make everything match you've got that lattice design and then you've also got that debossing design with that beautiful pattern as well and I reckon these pieces would look nice on your card making too um, so I have done some cards but I haven't sort of showed you unusual ways to use your dies. I've kind of just made like an oven on a card or used some of the, the gorgeous little edible pieces and stuff. But this could be used on a card too. You could maybe even have um, two or three of them depending on the length of your card to make a border across the card as well. Um, or you could use it as a little, maybe up this way, as a little sort of resting place for your main focal element or for your sentiment to sit or something as well. So that kind of little decorative die can be used on your cards too. Then you've got this square die which goes on the top of your cooker which gives you that main sort of piece for your um, hobs to go on to. So you've got that square decorative piece. You could use this on the front of the oven, the sides of the oven, even the back of the oven as well because the box is a cube. So you can definitely use this on all four of the sides. Maybe you want your um, oven to sit flush against the uh, floor or the table and you don't want those little curved legs that this piece gives you you could cut that straight across there and then use this square panel to decorate or maybe you want those little leg pieces to look like they're a different color and then if you use this panel to decorate 
decorate that side piece they would be you know whatever color your main box is made of and you can add a different color with your square panel as well so you've got versatility with that um and then you've also got your hob portion to put on top. Um, I, I say later on in the video, I really wanted to snip some of these apart and cut another one and put a fifth one in the centre to make it look like um, my actual hob with the five burners in it. But you can definitely play around with um, how you make this as well. You don't have to use this. I mean, this is more of like a gas hob. But if you have an electric hob, you could just take some small circle dies from your stash because there isn't actually anything that's an, an actual circle in this set so you could just take small circle dies from your stash and do the two the same size one large one small that's like typical of a, a UK um, electric hob kind of cooker system as well um, so you could definitely personalize this to whoever's um, oven you're kind of trying to recreate or whether it's your oven as well and then you also have this piece here which gives you the controls and again you can personalise this, they can be next to the hobs, they can be beside the hobs, in front of the hobs, they can be on the front of the oven or they can be on that sticking up back piece, I go through all of that later on as well but you have that piece there and then you also have this little piece that cuts out four of the little knobs to uh, change the heat and turn on your little uh, gas burner hobs as well um, or if you turn them into electric ones then they can be for those too but you've actually got those in there too if you didn't want them to look like this i think the waste from a hole punch would make fantastic little round knobs as well or you could put nouveau drops too i think they'd work really nicely as the little controls so you've got that piece then um i think all of the rest of the pieces are kind of decorative pieces so there's these two pieces here which i think are designed to be the window on the front of the oven um, so you've got this outer rectangle and then an inner rectangle so you can make a little frame to go around the um, the window of the oven and you can cut your aperture into it so you can have a see-through window inside the oven but you can also use these in conjunction with the sentiments that are in here or you could just use either of these to create um, a tray to put your food on or to create another decorative portion elsewhere on your oven especially if you've done that tall back piece you can use one of these dies to create um, a decorative backsplash or a sign or something to, to be on the wall as well and this outside one has got slightly more of um, curved corners and then the interior one actually gives you a debossed line in there as well I have got one cut out somewhere from silver if I can find it so you can see that beautiful debossed line that you get from that inner rectangle as well really pretty I love that debossing kind of effect so you've got those two dies and then these two sentiment dies fit inside of those so you've got made with love with a couple of little hearts in there as well and if you wanted to paper piece those bits back in that would work really nicely there's only two really fiddly bits inside the E's the the bits in the O, the A and the D aren't too difficult to paste, piece back in but the E's are probably the hardest piece but you can use your um, like a little picky uppy tool or your Nouveau embellishment tool as well and then this one says have a sweet day and then in the stamp set you've also got other sentiments that I'll run through as well but those are the two die cut sentiments that you can use and you can use them as like a sign on your backsplash um, as a little gift tag perhaps or you can even put them on the sort of window portion of your oven as well. Then we've got two main like decorative pieces that you can also put on the sides of your oven to embellish them a bit further. You've got this little bar piece with a couple of score lines here so you can fold them back and glue it on with utensils hanging off of it. So you've got a spatula, like a wooden spoon, maybe a silicone spatula and a fork as well um, which you can personalise to whatever kind of colours. Maybe you have a specific colour scheme in your kitchen or maybe you like um, that rainbow finish um, stainless steel or um, a rose gold stainless steel or something you can really personalize what you cut these out of to make them look um you know realistic or to someone's specific taste and you can cut them out of craft card and turn this into a wooden spoon as well so you've got that piece and then this piece is in a similar style with the sort of band running across the top and the two little pieces there but these are also really easy to snip off as well but you've got a tea towel and you've got an oven glove as well but they're really easy to snip off and use individually um in different areas too 
but those are kind of together on there and you also get the decorative details to go inside them as well so you've got um, a little sort of stripy geometric pattern for your tea towel and then you've got that lattice kind of design for your oven glove as well and I think that looks really nice colour on colour because it gives that waffle kind of look to the fabric um, so that works really nicely for those and you have stamped um, designs that work in these two which I'll show you when we get to the stamp set Oh, this is another part of the oven this is the handle for the door so if you want to use this handle you've got that option or you can just create your own handle from a little strip of cardstock depending what kind of style handle you want as well um, and you do you have an indication here I mean these are actually just more like release holes to get your die cut out of the die but they've put them perfectly in the center of those two end pieces so if you did want to attach it with a brad you can put your pokey tool through those two um, sort of they will end up being embossed pieces is when you run it through your die cutting machine and you'll get them perfectly in the center of those pieces as well this will also be useful for uh, using on other die sets as well if you just want a different handle for something too so you've got that you've got a gorgeous little chopping board so a really sweet little chopping board that you can cut from craft card or you could make it from white card give it some veining detail make it look like it's marble or cut it from a colored card and make it look like it's a plastic cutting board as well then you've got this gorgeous little tray so it's kind of like a, a lap tray or it could be again resting up um, against your large splashback at the back of the oven it can be a, a gorgeous pretty tray and you have the extra die here which you could use to make it look like it's um, you know got that sort of recessed area in the center or you could use it to cut like a patterned paper out or a photograph or you know something else to give it that gorgeous decorative pattern on there because a lot of trays have beautiful patterns on them they're not just like a solid color they have a beautiful design on them so you can definitely do that with those two dies then we have this one which is kind of like could be a casserole dish could be some kind of a skillet or something with two little handles and the the circular piece there as well then you've got um, a couple of different sort of frying pans or if you're looking at them from the top down view they could be saucepans as well. I think this one would be, to me, is more like a frying pan. This one could be a saucepan with that different sort of handle on it. But you can use them for whatever you like really. You could even use them elsewhere and it could be a handheld mirror. That could definitely be a mirror. You could take a small circle die from your stash and cut it out of a mirror card and it can be a handheld mirror. Um, you could maybe even turn it into a tennis racket or a badminton racket or something as well. Maybe this one even um, a ping pong racket perhaps or a ping pong bat um, could look like that too. So you've got options to sort of change them. And then, finally, we have these gorgeous little dies here, which are all um, different food elements that you can put in your pans cooking on the hob. Or later on in the video, when I show you my samples, I've created my own little plates and then made these as food on the little plates as well. So this one gives you sort of like biscuits. So you've got a gingerbread man, then this one is kind of like got that twisted kind of pattern debossed into it you've got a Christmas biscuit there as well which has a debossed snowflake in it you've got almost like a donut a frilly edge donut you've got a, a star shaped biscuit which has a debossed bit and then you've also got this round biscuit with the star missing from the middle so you could turn that into a jammy dodger as well you can put a bit of red card underneath and maybe even sandwich another one under there and turn it into a jammy dodger but you've got all of those beautiful biscuits and um, especially this kind of one it looks fantastic if you die cut them and then sprinkle a tiny little bit of white embossing powder on top of it and then heat it from underneath and it looks like that little sprinkling of icing sugar and I also did that on this die as well which is a little waffle so you've got a gorgeous little waffle and I cut that out of um I did it out of white card actually, then stuck it onto another piece of white card trimmed around the edge of it and then I used my alcohol pens to colour it like a waffle and then I went in with a little bit of um, white embossing powder and sprinkled it on top and then heated it from underneath and it looks fantastic as a waffle. You could also just use... Um, a circle die from your stash and turn it into a pancake or you could use a circle die fold it in half and make it look like an omelette as well um, so lots of different ideas of other bits and pieces that you could do you could even cut a um, 
a few random shapes oh my goodness that's got really stuck on that magnet you could even cut a few random shapes out of cardstock and color them to look like bacon as well because you've got a piece of bread or toast and you've got an egg so you could do like a full english breakfast maybe cut a couple of pieces that look like sausages as well and have um sausages eggs maybe even do tiny little um orange nouveau drops on a plate as well and it'll look like baked beans too so you've got so many different options of making different plates of food and stuff as well there doesn't have to be still cooking in the frying pan you can just take a circle that you have um, and turn it into a plate I'll show you that later on in the video um, and you can add any of your little food elements but that egg is just so adorable so cute really really sweet and I love that the yolk already cuts out of the middle so you can easily replace it back in after you've coloured it um, a yellow or an orange colour as well then we have got the stamp set as well I think I might put these dies away first and then I'll come back and show you the stamp set so this is the coordinating stamp set that goes along with the showcase and we have actually got elements that have dies that coordinate with them as well that we can cut out. So we've got a couple of control panels here um, that we can use that have the coordinating die which is just what you can use to do a die cut control panel or you can use it to cut out either of these two as well and you can also use it to cut out these two sentiments too, they work really nicely with that. Then you also have the oven glove and tea towel die which you can actually line up perfectly and stamp these two beautiful patterns. So this one's more of like a floral pattern with a stitching around the edge and then this one is um, a sort of smaller representation of the debossing pattern in there. Sorry that my stamps are a little bit dirty but I've been using them. It's a little hard to see the pattern. I will show it closer in a second but you actually have the designs to go perfectly on both of those areas. And then the other die that you have coordinating dies for is the oven portion here and the smaller one um, can actually be used around this to cut it out or to create a window um, and then you can put this behind your oven window so that you can see the cakes inside or if you didn't like because when you cut this out um, there is like um, an extra border around the edge I just coloured it grey um, to kind of disguise it but if you didn't like that you could use the layering die for the tray and just make your oven window smaller and then it would look you know more sort of finished and you wouldn't have that extra sort of grey edge around the edge or if you have any other rectangles in your stash that's sort of in between those two sizes you could use that as well if you wanted to if you didn't like the look of having the border around the edge but I think it looks perfectly fine if you colour it in grey it just looks like it's part of the oven so you don't really notice it that much but I thought I'd give you that option just in case um, yeah, and then all of uh, a lot of the sentiments will fit inside any of these sort of uh, rectangle dies as well. So let's run through all of the actual words in here too. So we've got actually let's show you that show you the patterns up close first before I forget. So those are the two stamped patterns there, um, and I'll show you the cupcakes up close as well. They have got cherries on top of them, which I'm not sure. Um, if I'd put cherries on on top of a cupcake before I cooked it, but it might make a cool effect actually. I've never tried it, um, but. I couldn't resist making them sparkly in my sample as well so I, I just thought I'd point that out that they had cherries on top of them in the oven I thought it was funny um, but yeah you've got those gorgeous cupcakes um, on that stamp so the rest of the stamps you've got this beautiful design here which has got a lovely heart and then sort of like almost leafy kind of designs coming off of it as well um, I use this um, clear heat embossing in a background just to give a little bit of extra interest but you could use it to decorate the little tray you could use it to decorate part of the oven you could use it to decorate that backsplash piece if I just pick that die up you could have that pattern on the little sort of raised up bit at the back of the oven so there's loads of areas that you could use that beautiful pattern you could even um, stamp portions of it whichever way round you want um, onto the tea towel as well or even onto the oven glove if you wanted a little heart on your oven glove as well so you've got options for adding different decorative patterns to things then you've got the two controls here so you can either go with the die cut controls you can go with this one which looks more like my oven with the um, LCD kind of display in the centre or you can go with just um, the five controls on here as well which I think I would use if I was going to turn the hob into a five burner I think I would use that one then 
to go with that. You've got grandma's kitchen and grandpa's kitchen, but you can just utilise the word kitchen if maybe you call uh, your grandma um, nanny or nan. You can, um, you know, use some stamps from your stash or just handwrite it and use the word kitchen after it. Um, and same with grandpa if you call them granddad or um, uh, granby as well. You can... Um, uh, mix up that as well or you can write somebody's name before the word kitchen too um you've got these ones that i've already been through and then we've got baked with love made just for you you're the sweetest from our home to yours sending sweet wishes and then handmade from the kitchen of and you've got a little uh, straight line to go underneath there as well so you could do um oh sorry that says homemade from the kitchen of not handmade um so you've got this kind of piece could be used on like a jar of marmalade, a jar of chutney, could be like lemonade that you've made, um, you could have infused some kind of alcohol with different scents or something or flavours, you could uh, put it on a bottle of that. So there's loads of different um, ideas for using this as well and turning things into tags and stuff and using that on the back of it too. So um, those are all of the stamps that coordinate with the die set and enhance your little ovens and stuff as well. So I will pass you over to past me to show you all of the samples and to finish off the video as well. Okay, so these are my three three-dimensional um, oven examples to show you. However, I cheated and I didn't actually make these three. I was going to stay with my parents for a couple of weeks as a little break and uh, my mum was dying to play with this oven die set so I let her use it first before I'd had a chance to use it and she created these three gorgeous little ovens. I think this one's her favourite from what she was saying um, but she wanted to try doing the um, clear window in them using the stamp behind it or just the clear window and doing a solid window one as well so she's done all sorts of different options on them and it's going to be uh, different for me to explain how she made them but I'm, I'm think I can figure out all the different bits and pieces that she was using so this is the first one that she's done and she's done that extended back piece to it so rather than just using um, the small back piece she's actually stuck the small back piece here from here to here and then she's actually just cut another rectangle of cardstock to extend it at the back and you can see here um, the top pretty part of that pointing over the top I think it would also look really nice um, I mean you could make it tall and have it just with a straight edge or having it short with a straight edge as well maybe even trying to construct um, a little cooker hood as well because my um, oven my like main oven is actually a double oven on in the wall and then I have my gas hob so you could even put multiple units next to each other and then um, change them into different things so you could have like uh, for example in my kitchen I have the hobs then I have a cupboard then I have a dishwasher so you could turn them into like dishwashers uh, washing machines tumble dryers all sorts of different um, appliances for the kitchen and maybe even make like a, a long bank of them that could be exactly how someone else's kitchen is maybe they have an empty space for an appliance and they have a little curtain over it or something you could create a little curtain uh, for one of them as well I think it would look really cool to actually build up like a whole little kitchen scene and then have like one continuous pieces like the worktop going across the top as well I think that would look fantastic but um, the rest of this one she's used a gorgeous satin mirror card on the side here to get that gorgeous debossing design in there she's also used the same for the towel rail and then it looks like she's used pistachio and cream to create the oven mitt and the little tea towel and she's added little accents on here as well uh, with a nouveau glitter marker it looks like morning moss to me um, just to add like little stitching details on the little plain cream coloured tea towel um, on the front she's added the little controls for the oven and she's actually edged that little panel with that same uh, morning moss glitter marker as well and she's also brought the um, satin mirror card around to the front and done the little door for the oven the main actual oven box opens like this but you can make it look like it has a, another door for the actual oven as well um, then the other side she's done the gorgeous embossing again she's cut the little chopping board out of that pistachio colour and then for this little pan here she's used the glitter marker to colour the handle and do a rim to the pan and then this one she said she found a die in her stash that was just a tiny bit smaller so she actually cut this whole frying pan out of the um, satin mirror card and then she snipped off the handle to put it back onto the cream one and then she also snipped off that top part and then die cut another circle right in the centre of it just to give a skinny little frame around the edge and then she's done the little rail in cream for this side 
because she'd done it in the satin mirror on the other side. Then for the back, she's used that gorgeous little panel piece, but because she's made this longer, it's just sort of um, decorating that top portion. She's added a little bar for the utensils to hang from, and again, she has gone and snipped off uh, the bottom pieces, so it looks like the handle of the fork and the spoon and the spatula um, have got that gorgeous metallic finish to them, and then their cream on the rest of it. And then to add a splash back, she used one of the dies that you would use, I think it's the fall away actually, that she's used to create this frame around the actual oven door and she's used one of these large panels to emboss it onto there as well but if you had um, a brick wall stencil um, and like one of your Nouveau pastes or uh, maybe even like um, a clear glossy sort of paste as well that you could colour maybe to give that really shiny ceramic kind of look. You could do ceramic tiles across a backsplash as well um, to give a really cool look or um, maybe again if you're making this specifically for a person maybe they have uh, one of those you know sort of um, glass not almost like a worktop saver but they always have like beautiful pictures in them often people use them as backsplashes as well if they actually had a specific one like that you could uh, take a photo of it shrink it down and actually put that on there as well um or maybe they don't have an oven that has a wall behind it maybe their oven is in front of the window like my parents ones their hob piece is has got a window directly in front of it so you could even create a window into this as well maybe using one of the kit die sets i'm sure i'm pretty sure we had a window relatively recently um also if you were um a Crate and Craft Club member a couple of months ago they had that gorgeous veranda um, window die with the little cat in it and stuff you could make a window with that as well and just have this as like a scene with, with the window sort of showing into the garden as well so you could build it up differently that way uh, but that is the first one that my mum created and the box to put together is really easy I'm sure I will have shown you already earlier on in the video the instructions come inside the box of the packaging and it's literally like three steps it's literally um, a couple of pieces that you stick together with glue tabs as any sort of regular tonic box that goes together and then you have a semicircle here that's slightly smaller and then one that's slightly bigger with a slit in it and then that's how the oven door stays shut but you could even do some kind of fun mechanism for the the front of the drawer maybe you've got a lap closure from uh, one of your other tonic die sets or maybe you've got the memory book locks or something and you could do like a little padlock hanging from there and turn it into I don't know like Houdini's chest or something it doesn't have to just be an oven it can be any kitchen appliance I'm sure you can turn it into I'm thinking at least four possibly more um, and I mean you can you can go completely out of the box and go down like the magician's route you could make it into uh, because it's that sort of cube shape you could turn it into some kind of shipping crate it could be an old crate that you'd find on a pirate ship or something and you could put the little planks going around the edge and across the center so there's so many different ways you can take this kind of basic shape and turn it into so many other different things because there's nothing to stop you snipping off those arched pieces that create the legs on the bottom of it and I also think that you could could put two of these on top of each other and um, you could do that kind of uh, washing machine tumble dryer kind of idea with them on top of each other because I think uh, some people do put their washing machines on top of their tumble dryers or you could go for um, a double oven kind of idea as well and I have done that on a card because um, I, I love my double oven and uh, I wanted to kind of recreate that on a card my oven is like a small oven and a bigger oven but you could um, alter this box to make a small oven for the top and then a bigger oven at the bottom and then you could just have the controls on the top one as well to make a different kind of concept but that is the first one that she's created a sort of um, kind of I think she said 1970s sort of a look but really lovely and I love this pattern on the side as well I didn't get a chance to use that on any of the cards that I've made but that would look fantastic um, as my mum did on this one where she just took another die cut but just used this as a little plate to get that pattern on um, I think that would look fantastic on some other cards cutting out different shapes out of them and embossing them with that pattern then the next one that she has done she's done another one with the top piece but she's made it slightly shorter so she's brought that piece down further it's more like an inch down from the top of the box so that you've got a different height for the the back piece of the cooker um she has done this top portion again embossed but she's actually used um i think this one's called crimson silk actually uh this sort of like that stripy design but with that gorgeous metallic finish, um, it's it's uh, one of the luxury cardstocks. I'm pretty sure it's called Crimson 
silk or something like that. I'm sure it's got crimson in the name. Um, and she's done the side panels the same as well. And then this pattern paper um, is actually one of the ones from the newest Tonic magazine. And it's actually the same pattern that's on the back of the box. Um, if you saw my up close video for the new Tonic magazine issue number four, um, I was explaining that one of the pattern papers looks exactly like the same pattern as on the back of the box. And this is that pattern paper that she's used here. She's used the larger oven die to create her backsplash in this one. And she's also used it to cut the oven mitt, the tea towel and the tray on the other side. I love that you get the little die to do the tray as well. Um, this one she was extremely clever with how she's put this together and she's used foam tape to recess the um, stamped image of the cupcakes cooking in the oven um, but she's put acetate across the front and done a lovely little frame around it and then she's recessed this back inside it to make it look like um, it's actually the cakes cooking in the oven and you've got that perspective and I nicked that idea for my card that I've done. Um, and then she's also put the little handle on the front. She loves her hollow waves, so there's lots of hollow waves accents in here as well. Um, and the utensils on this one. Then on the hobs on this one, oh, I didn't actually talk about the hobs much on this one. But this one, she's actually um, used a ruler and drawn some of that morning moss glitter, um, nouveau glitter marker, round the edge. And then she's cut the actual elements for the hobs um, out of that satin mirror card again. But this one, she's gone with more layers. She noticed on the packaging, um, Alice one where she had die cut the hobs into this main rectangular panel and then recessed them back in and put the black underneath and she really liked that idea so she went along with that and she's put the controls on the top of the oven this time so instead of having them on the front like this one she's moved the handle into that position and then she's put the controls on the top so in her kitchen they are down the side of her hobs but in my kitchen they're across the front so you can actually put them in area, any orientation that you want and I was thinking I did run out of time I I've made the cards but I didn't want to prolong this video anymore because I think this one is actually going to go out after um showcase number 29 um so I didn't want to leave it any longer and create any more examples but I was thinking of snipping these apart and creating a fifth burner in the center because my hobs have got um a kind of wok one in the center I don't actually use it but I quite like the design of having the five of them and you can definitely put five controls on here as well so you can definitely alter it to give you that five kind of burner hob as well um, but I really like the way she's done this and she's recessed it inside and then she's raised it up on foam as well and the controls are raised up on foam to give a little bit more dimension and then she's put a plate of uh, biscuits on the top as well and she's also stamped that little tray or plate that she's put them on and I love the way she's added that little bit of colouring with a Nouveau pen around the edge really picks out the design and that biscuit there it's so pretty with that snowflake embossed on it I think if you inked up your dye with a little bit of white ink first and then did that it would really look like an iced biscuit or you know like um shortbread dusted with icing sugar I think that's fantastic those little biscuits and that you get six of them and they all cut out at once as well so that is uh, this oven and then you can open this in exactly the same way as the other ones. She's actually done an extra element around the top here and she's drawn a little line of uh, grey alcohol pen around the top to tie in the silver elements that are in there as well um, and to tie in the grey colouring that she's done in the oven. And then you've got the inside of the box again as well. Um, and I'll measure this box actually while I've got one here already made up. So it is actually about two and three quarter inches and I presume that is cubed yeah so it's roughly a two and three quarter inch cube in there so, so you've got a really decent sized compartment to put your gift in and um I was also thinking if you had um like a, for someone's really special birthday but you know they live by themselves and they don't eat much cake or something you could make them a really super duper cupcake obviously don't do the icing really super high on it do a, a small sort of cupcake in there or even one of those um, tiny iced cakes you know when you, you get little cakes like this and they're actually iced with the fondant icing um, for a little cake box like that for um, you know a special birthday for a next door neighbour or something I think that would work really nicely as well and you could even line the inside of this with greaseproof paper to protect it from having a cake in there too uh, but I think that would be a really lovely way of uh, giving a gift like that to somebody but definitely chocolates and stuff as well um, or even craft products maybe 
I've got a distress ink here from another project I was doing. No, it's just slightly too small for a distress ink, but that gives you a good size actually of the size of this oven. It's just a little bit smaller than a distress ink. So any little gift that you have that is this kind of size um, should fit in there really nicely. I guess it's almost like a tennis ball size if you think about something round. So a chocolate orange would probably fit inside there as well, actually. You could make this all Christmassy and have... Um, the gingerbread men on the top and maybe have like little fairy lights maybe you've got the I think it was the Christmas shop windows also the train recently had little fairy lights you could decorate this really Christmassy and then you could put like a, a chocolate orange inside there and give it as a gift to somebody as well so that is the second one that my mum made and then she's also done this one as well she wanted to do something different with the back piece here so she has actually done the short back on this one and she's put um, a little plaque here that she has shadowed with hollow waves because that's her favourite um, and a gorgeous like uh, custody sort of colour of cardstock that sort of um, almost like vintage baker lighty kind of a colour um, for this oven she's gone with um, and she's done that on the back there and she used uh, I think it was rich rosewood she said for the inking on here she's just swiped her ink pad across the back here because she wanted it to match in with the stamping that she'd done on the oven mitt and the tea towel as well um, and then on this side she has done the utensils on the side of the oven on the other one she's done towel rails on the side but this one she's done the utensils on the side because she didn't have the top piece to put the utensils on the back she's also um cut this one out of black so it looks like a proper non-stick frying pan and then she's got the other utensils there keeping those little red bits on to be the color of the handles she's used the actual cutting dies for the side panels on this one rather than um embossing but this is actually the same card that she's used so that shows you kind of like the two different effects that you can get with the same cardstock so die cutting or embossing it into it then uh, what else has she done she's put just the single tea towel on that side of it so she's just snipped off the oven glove that was there and then cut around it and put it onto here she's actually threaded it through the handle there so I'm presuming yeah she's just um, finished off the loop because it's actually across on a bar and then she's cut a slit in it and slid it around the handle and she's done the handle in the same colour cardstock as these panels that she's done this one is completely see-through so whatever present you put in here you can see it so this one might be nice for the cupcake or a little cake idea so someone knows uh, straight away that there's a cake inside there um, and she's just done the acetate window with a little frame of hollow waves around the edge of it and if we open this one up you can see she's just used some red liner tape to secure the acetate behind there as well and then for the hobs on this one, she's done them like uh, my parents' hobs where the controls are down the side. And she's again done that recessed design. She really liked that idea of uh, cutting the sort of element pieces or the, the grid that goes over the top of the hobs um, from black and recessing it back into the panel. So she's also cut it from the panel as well and then put it back inside and then put hollow waves underneath it to give a little bit of rainbow reflection. Then she's got a chopping board on the top with a piece of toast and she's got an egg in the frying pan and she put some Nouveau drops on the yolk of the egg as well I presume she used what's it called I think it's called dandelion yellow the yellow one I think it's dandelion yellow um, she's just put that as the yolk on the egg and she's done the controls down the side with the little long bar in the middle and the four controls for the four different hobs on there as well so I love all of the little samples that mum made and um, it really helped me out because it meant that I didn't have to, um, I could focus on the cards rather than making a few 3D ovens. I probably would have only had time to make one oven and a couple of cards but instead I've got three ovens to show you and I've also got three cards to show you as well. So hopefully you enjoyed um, seeing somebody else's take on the oven die set. And it was really fun sitting across from her in her craft room um, and seeing her get so excited and she couldn't decide which oven to make first. So it was really funny watching her do all of that. But she had so much fun playing with it. So I'm sure if you've already got yours, um, you're going to have been having so much fun playing with them as well. I know this video is really late compared to the, the launch of the die set. But I know a lot of you really love coming back and watching these videos um, when you've got your die set. So I thought I might as well actually um, film the video.
but look, actually look at all of those together imagine if one was a washing machine and one was a tumble dryer or even just cupboards you know what I was saying about doing the kitchen cupboards um, I've got like shaker style um, cupboards in my kitchen so you could uh, have these as solid panels to cut little strips of cardstock make that kind of shaker style door or if um, maybe whoever you're making it for has really fancy kind of handle dies you could use a, um, a posher kind of handle on them or you could do little nouveau drops as the little like door handles you know like a little corner doorknob or something um, and you could play around with where the handles are like if they're down the side of a cupboard or if they are on the top or if they've got a bank of drawers next to their oven or something um, you can really play around with this which I really love and um, as I said in my kitchen my hobs are over a bank of drawers so I could um, you know try and recreate it and do turn this into three drawers but have the hobs on the top of it and then put the five burners on the top and then I could also go in with a brick kind of like stencil and create some uh, subway tile sort of um, brickwork in the back of the splashback as well and you could even go even further and try and create your own um, little extractor hood as well to go over the top too so there's so many ideas that you can do with these 3d ovens but as always I love showing you ideas of how you can use all of these elements on your cards as well so I've got three different card ideas to show you so this first card is really simple. I just took that utensil die that has the multiple utensils on it. I cut it from silver mirror card, craft card, and then I think this is the um, sea spray or sea salt green colour from the um, Spring Meadow colour trend. I really love this colour. Um, so I've just cut it from all three of those colours and then I've snipped off different ones and then I've just cut a little strip of white card and put double sided tape behind them and then stuck them at different angles and at differing heights so they kind of look like different utensils going all the way across the card. And I've tried to sort of equally space out um, the colours of the utensils as well. And then on these ones that are the spatulas, I also kept the um, the green at the top so it looks like they've got a green handle to them. And then they're actually metal spatulas as well. And for the sentiment on this one, I just did from our home to yours. I thought that was a, a simple kind of sentiment. But this kind of one, um, it could be good for somebody who's a chef because they would probably have a lot of utensils um, and have favourite kind of spoons or spatulas that they use for specific things like I whenever I'm cooking pancakes I always use a specific spatula I've got a couple of spatulas but I always go for the, the one in particular to flip a pancake over um, so you could really personalize it in that way and again if someone has a, a color of their kitchen you can personalize the um, little utensils to be that specific color as well which is nice then uh, this idea which I was telling you about making a double oven to go on the card as well and if you got um, I think it was a stamp club wasn't it that had the oven die in it I'm sure you could mix and match these all together and create some really wonderful kind of effect as well because I think I did my oven differently to how anybody else had put their oven together because I made it have a um, an oval window in the front of it so you could definitely mix and match all these different pieces together and create something different or more like whatever appliance you have in your kitchen as well but I really wanted to have a go at that double oven I know these two ovens are the same size not a small top oven and a, a larger bottom oven but I really wanted to give it a go and I love that that you know that looks perfectly like the top of a big oven because you have the two controls for the bottom oven and two controls for the top oven and the little display for your timer in the middle and um, then I've uh, used the smaller of the two dies to cut the apertures in this pearlescent silver cardstock. I've used both dies together to cut my little silver frame and in the waste piece from the centre of the um, pearlescent silver cardstock one of the dies give this little deboss line so I used um, two, the two long sides of one of those interior pieces and cut myself some little handles to go on the actual oven so it looks more like my oven rather than having the um, handle from the die set but you can definitely use that one as well that would look lovely on there too and then I have snipped apart the tea towel and the oven glove and I've done them in my kind of kitchen colours um, and I've just layered the decorative design onto the solid design so it kind of gives that sort of uh, waffly fabric sort of a look um, you know with that sort of debossing design in there I thought it went quite nicely then inside the oven I've used um, some warm grey kind of colours to colour everything in I've done a sort of deep green kind of baking tray again to go with these 
kind of pieces. I've done a light blue kind of cupcake case. I did actually put um, a sparkly gel pen on the cherries. I'm really not sure why there are cherries on the cake when they're in the oven, um, but I just couldn't resist putting a little dot of uh, a pinky red colour on their cherries and I also tied that in by drawing a little heart next to the sentiment and colouring that in the same colour as well and I had to just use the baked with love sentiment because I'm always baking cupcakes so I thought this would go really really nicely. You could if you wanted to take this even further you know really go to town adding the rest of the the cupboards that would be either side of this in your wall um, and like doing the top cupboard as well but I decided just to leave it as it was just a freestanding double oven kind of unit but I really love how that one turned out and I'm so glad I gave it a go and I pinched mum's idea of um, you know recessing the stamped image behind with the acetate in the front um, to give that actual look of like glass in front of the cupcakes and then the final card that I did which I think possibly could be my favourite I really love how this turned out I could not resist using that little egg so I've used it so many times on this card I've got the toast as well I've done the little waffles and the gingerbread men too and for the waffles here I, I bought these little pieces they're like the little clay confetti ages ago I bought a packet that had strawberries and a packet that had lemons in different colours and luckily I remembered that I had them because I thought oh my goodness they'll go absolutely perfectly on this and then also because I wanted to make this look um, you know, really like appetising, I thought, well, if you had a waffle, you might sprinkle icing sugar on it. So I've done the little dusting of icing sugar just with some fine detail white embossing powder. And I sprinkled it on top and then heated it from underneath so it wouldn't blow off as I was um, heating it. And then I've just piled them up onto a plate and then put the little strawberries on the top of those waffles. There's a strawberry on this one. And then on these two, I've put um, the little heart, not heart, the little star that fell out of the middle of one of the biscuits that I was cutting because I cut a bunch of different bits and pieces um, I thought it could be like a star shaped pat of butter to go on there as well and then I've done the lemon on the pancakes or the waffles too so I thought that would work really really nicely and in the background I've done some subtle clear on white heat embossing just to add a little bit of interest to the background and all of the plates um, I'm, I'm sure someone's going to ask how I made the plates. It is literally just a circle die. So it's a, one of the tonic circles in one of their um, layering die sets from ages ago that just had a load of plain edged circles. And I measured the actual size of it and it is a one and a quarter inch diameter circle. Or if I go on the centimetres, it's just under three and a half centimetres so it's that size of a circle and then I just ran a medium sized ball tool around the edge of it to create that kind of plate look to them. I've also piled up gingerbread men on this one as well and I've put little uh, red gel pen dots in the little buttons as well so it kind of looks like um, little jelly sweet buttons and then some of the plates I've just done like this one's just got toast this one's just got eggs this one's got an, one egg on and two pieces of toast and then same over here and then this one's got one piece of toast and two eggs just to make it look a little bit different and then for the sentiment I've done you're the sweetest and then I've done it between two of the sweet options for like they're kind of like breakfast although I'm not sure who would eat gingerbread men for breakfast maybe at Christmas you would um but yeah I just I really loved how that turned out and these were just like the perfect accents um and I'm so glad I remembered that I'd bought them. Um, I can't remember what the reason was why I bought them in the end. I think I did buy them for a specific reason, but they've just been sitting um, in my drawer. So I'm very glad I had a, a use for them. And they're the perfect kind of little scale. I think they were Trinity stamps, those ones. Um, you know, in those cute little boxes that they come in. So that is the third card that I managed to do with this die set. There are so many more ideas, though. Um, and I'm... Uh, as always, I always run out of time before I get round to doing all of the ideas, but as I was saying before, this sort of gorgeous embossed panel would look fantastic. You could do, um, you know, cut into different uh, sh sizes and shapes and stuff to make patterns. You could do a similar version to this, but using lots of frying pans and chopping boards and stuff going across a card. Um, maybe, I mean, maybe that would be more for a, a chef. I'm not sure, really. Because I guess these, these could be baker or chef, really, couldn't they? Um, and maybe this would be more of a, a chef. Um, and you could actually, as well, one of these... 
well maybe this one or possibly this one you could take the waist from a hole punch you know that standard little hole punch size and put circles all across here and it might make it look like um, a cupcake tray I know these are actually just cupcakes on flat trays uh, but you could give the illusion of like a, a, a divoted cupcake tray um, as well using the little circles there's probably even a little circle that falls out of something as well I think the egg centers or the yolks would be a little bit too small but maybe one of the pieces that falls out of one of the biscuits would work nicely but I think just um, the size of a, a normal hole punch would look really good to create a little cupcake tray um, and I'm sure there's loads of other bits and pieces that you can do I can't 100% remember exactly what was in that um, stamp club that had that oven in but I'm pretty sure they would work really nicely together and then there was also that um, milk and cookie stamp club too I'm sure there'd be elements in there that you could combine as well so uh, there might even have been a plate in that actually so you could even use that instead of um, making your own plates as well so yeah um, take a look through all of your previous like tonic die sets or any other die sets that you have that are food related or appliance related or anything um, and I'm sure they'll mix and match really nicely for turning this gorgeous three dimensional oven into other kind of elements as well or just building upon your oven too. So I hope you enjoyed this up close video looking at Tonic Showcase number 28 which is Baked With Love and I'm so sorry it's late uh, but hopefully those of you who love watching my videos um, will really appreciate seeing uh, all the bits and pieces that you can kind of create with this die set and hearing a few extra ideas maybe as well but I'm sure a lot of you have already got hold of this die set and have already been playing with it as well and you've probably even thought up so many more ideas than what I've um, managed to think up as well. So hopefully you enjoyed the video and got a little bit of inspiration um, and thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next one. Bye!